Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. The topic of this 10 minute moan is the spanner in the works that is about to be placed by an SMP activist uh, and an SMP member um, into the expected non-contest for the SMP leader rule. So, before we do that, a lot of people ask how can you support the channel and my efforts. Uh, very simple, you could become a member of the channel if you wish or subscribe. But the easiest thing to do, thumbs up, when you see a video, does wonders for me. So I'd appreciate that. So what's happened recently, the, unless you've been living under a rock or the moon, you'll probably be well aware that Hamza Yousaf stood down and the SNP now seek a new leader who would then be put in front of Parliament to hopefully, for them, be placed as the new First Minister of Scotland. So, that looked as if that's the way it was going to go. Swinney through his hat in the ring. Uh, Kate Forbes uh, got some support. They've done a deal. Kate Forbes isn't going to challenge him. And that should allow him to be, you know, put in as the leader without a contest. If there was a contest, the SNP members would get to pick who the SNP leader would be. That would take a bit of time. And then once that was concluded, as long as that person was an MSP, they would then be put forward for the role as First Minister in Parliament would accept them or not. So that's where we're up to. Everybody thought the deadline's uh, Monday at noon and everyone expected there to be zero opposition. So when he would be told on Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning or something, you're the new leader, then they would be put to Parliament. So, what's happened since? Well, there was a independence rally in Glasgow and a guy called Graham McCormack, who is a bit of an activist. However, I'll come back to something that he'd done at the, one of their congresses recently. It was clear, off the wall, um, but not so daft notion that he had how we should tax people in Scotland. Um, but anyway, we'll come back to that later. So this Graham McCormack, he has found support, enough support, suggests from within the ranks of the SNP the, where he could possibly stand as a candidate to oppose Swinney. Doubt that he'll win, but just to prove a point that the, the constitution of the SNP is more important to him than those who want to lead the party from within Holyrood stroke Westminster. He feels it should be more of a uh, member-led organisation as per its constitution. So, um, on Saturday at this march, there was a load of people um, trying to get the support that we need because to stand for a candidate, you need at least 100 members to propose you and they have to be spread over at least 20 um, party areas across Scotland. And he feels and his supporters feel that he's got that. So it will remain to be seen if he submits that on Monday and um, sets off a, a reaction which would lead to a leadership contest. Now, Swinney, he's come out today and gave um, his opinion on that. Now, last night, I was made aware of this. Someone was very um, thankful for them for tagging him into a conversation between SNP members on X last night. And I thought, what's going on here? Um, and so I started looking into this last night. So somebody's approached Swinney now because the mainstream media have got a hold of it. And he has warned rivals against entering the contest saying it would delay the ability for the party to start its rebuilding. Well, it would delay them by about three or four weeks. I don't think it's the end of the world in the grand scheme of things, but there is another knock-on effect for the government that I'll come back to. The former deputy leader is currently the only candidate running to replace Hamza Yousaf, who announced last week he'd be stepping down, blah, blah, blah. Rumours surfaced today that an SNP activist, Graham McCormack, has gathered enough support to launch his own bid the top job if he submits an application before Monday. Speaking to Sky Sport, sorry, Sky News Sunday morning with Trevor Phillips, Mr Sweeney accepted there was a democratic pro process for any candidate with 100 signatures, signatures from 20 local SNP organisations to enter the race. However, in what appeared to be a warning to any potential rival, he added, my bid to become SNP leader has received very, very comprehensive support within the SNP. I have sent out a message which is about you find the SNP to strengthen our party and win Scottish independence. I think that is necessary 
as the SNP is not as cohesive today as a party needs to be, and my campaign has attracted very wide support. I tend to agree with you there. Your party is certainly not as cohesive today as it needs to be. It's all over the place. So I think the SNP has got a chance to start rebuilding from a difficult period that we've had under my leadership. And bluntly, I would just like to get on with that as quickly as I can. Because every day that we spend in an internal contest, which I think we'll probably know the outcome of, we delay the ability for the SNP to start its rebuilding. And I want to get on with that as quickly as I possibly can. There we go. Mr Swinney also pointed to the backing he's got from Kate Forbes, a former leader campaign who lost to Mr Yusuf last week, but has been considering running again. Asked by Trevor Phillips whether he would appoint her into the government, he said there were a couple of hurdles to get over before we do that. I think we all know that's a done deal, mate. However, Mr Swinney revealed the pair had spoken, and I think she's got an important contribution to make to the national life of Scotland. And I've made it clear that she will have a significant role within any government that I have the privilege to lead. So, there we go. Um, could get a bit messy for the SNP. And I would imagine if this guy, uh, McCormack, was to stand and went through the, the process, I don't think he, he would win. Um, he came up with, uh, I'm trying to remember what he called it. He came up with a plan to tax Scotland, whether independent or not, which was basically based on the amount of land that he owned. It sounds a bit bonkers, right? When you actually, when you, that sounds a bit 16th century or something. But when I actually spent a bit of time listening to his proposal in a video that he made for um, social media, and isn't he that bonkers? I don't know how workable it is, but it, it sounds that mad. Where basically, land in Scotland would be put into four different sections. One would be urban, which majority, you know, normal house and stuff like that. Um, eh, and you had the rural land was like arable cattle and basically something that you're doing nothing with and they all attracted a different pound per square metre charge and that was that, no income tax, no VAT, all these things and it sounded plausible, whether it's workable, I don't know but I wouldn't say the guy's a crackpot or a crank it was actually quite an interesting thing and I wouldn't mind actually if anybody knows him sitting down and doing a podcast with him on it because it sounded quite a you know, left field thinking which sometimes even if it wasn't workable might, you know be able to be tweaked to be workable. Um, anyway, that's who the guy is. Um, the other thing that, that, that's, that's strumming up for me, when Douglas Ross removed his um, vote of no confidence motion on Hamza Yousaf, I suggested that I wasn't completely happy with that because in my eyes it would have forced him into making decisions quicker. If he had done that, because my fear was the last time we had a change of First Minister, it was when Hamza became the First Minister, and it was about six or eight weeks after Nicola had stood up and said, I'm resigning as First Minister. It was about six or eight weeks, I think it was at least two calendar months anyway, um, before Nicola Sturgeon actually stood down. Now, if Douglas Ross had carried forward his motion and it got voted on, they would have 28 days to get it done and dusted. Now, whether or not they've got a leadership campaign to do or not, that's not my problem, your problem, or anybody else's problem. That's a problem with the SNP. And you don't need to present your leader to be the First Minister either. So I think if he'd have stuck by that motion, it would just have put a wee bit more pressure onto the SNP, and I think they'll do it. Now, because they're going to go into a leadership thing, it's just going to buy them more time again. I don't know if Douglas Ross was told by SNP that they were going to have a leader within a fortnight. And that's maybe why he backed down. I have no idea. But at the time, I did say that I wasn't too happy that he pulled that motion. I wish he just left it in place. Folk were saying, you're crazy. Humza's resigned. I said, Humza has not resigned. Humza has said he will resign whenever the SNP decide they're going to have a new leader. That's a, that's a different thing. He's answered First Minister's questions on Thursday there, so he's obviously still in power. And I just felt it was the right thing to do. Hindsight is a great thing, I do appreciate that, but with today's um, news, uh, that they could still go into a leadership battle, which could take weeks, um, then it might have been wiser to keep that in place. But as I say, hindsight's a wonderful thing, and I don't really know the genuine reasons why Douglas Ross pulled. One thing that was suggested to me on an X space was he was then able to take the, the glory 
for removing the First Minister, when in fact that was down to 100 quick green rainbow greens. If you look back and what actually, how the the, uh, the rock rolled down the hill, that's what started it. Um, anyway, I think I've spoke for long enough on this topic. Um, I think Graham um, McCormack will fail and he's bid to become the leader of the SNP and his actions are low, perfectly worthwhile, you know, he's perfectly um, allowed to do what he's doing, but, you know, like who would say democracy is not a, not, a, not, a, not a good thing, um, it will delay this process that we have in Holyrood now, and um, who knows where it will all end. I did think last week, I might be after two twists and turns, because this is Scottish politics we're dealing with, and it's bonkers, so I thought last week there might be a couple of twists and turns before this whole thing settled. And the ultimate twist and turn for me would be one that led to a general election. Still don't think that's going to happen, but we live in hope. So, if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, as long as you are not John uh, Swinney, SNP cult, or any of the people who are trying to run the Scottish Government when they're not in the Scottish Government, see everybody else in the world, have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.